have one of the cheapest gaming controllers you can buy, and here I have one of the most expensive. There is a $289 difference between the prices, but is this one really worth that much more, especially for Fortnite? Here's what you need to know. First, you need to subscribe. It's free and fast, plus I post all about controllers in Fortnite, so you'll love all my other videos. Now for real, ever since Fortnite released almost exactly five years ago, controller players have become obsessed with trying to find the best, most optimal setup. They want the best settings, the best accessories, and especially the best controller. And it's easy to find the best settings and best accessories, but there are dozens of good controllers out there. But the question is, which is the best? I have 24 controllers right now, and the truth is, it doesn't matter. There are only three things that truly matter when it comes to the best controller, and that's input delay, durability, and complementing features. The first, and in my opinion, most important factor about a controller is its input delay. This especially becomes an issue when you buy it like a knockoff cheap controller, and the actions from when you press a button to it actually happening in the game is delayed. This alone will make it almost impossible to become good at the game, but in my experience, every single controller that I have that costs more than $60 does not have this issue. Now, with that being said, I do also have a couple controllers under $60 that don't have this issue either. But another big issue with controllers is durability. Big controller companies like Scuf and Xbox Elites have received a ton of flack for the controllers breaking so easily while also costing hundreds of dollars. Unfortunately, I have not seen a controller that doesn't face these issues, regardless of how expensive it is. It seems like controller companies have begun to give up on making them more durable and instead started implementing easier ways to repair the issue. Like PlayStation is releasing a Pro PS5 controller that will have replaceable stick modules to repair stick drift easier. Cinch Gaming, which is the controller that I'm using in this gameplay, now offers a stick drift fix service. And lots of these companies have long warranties with repair programs specifically designed for issues such as stuck triggers, stick drift, and any other issues that could come up on a controller. So even though durability is important, there's no clear winner to which controller is the strongest. They're all pretty fragile. And with the third big controller issue is a more personal thing, which I like to call complementing features. This means a controller must have the features that you require. Like, I play on four paddles, so the best controller for me can't be one that doesn't have any paddles. This is where the cheap versus expensive argument really shines, because typically the more features a controller has, the more money it costs. Now, you don't need any features. Plenty of pros like Miro and Day just use a standard PS4 controller, and they play Claw, and they do it without literally any other features on their controller. So to break all that down, basically what I'm saying is the price of a controller does not determine how good it is. It's the input delay, durability, and complementing features that determine if it's good. This $26 controller is good, and this $315 controller is also good. However, this $17 controller is bad, and this $40 controller is also bad. Now that I've cleared all that up, let's check out this $26 controller and see how good I am on it versus the $315 controller. This is a wired only, no grip, no trigger stop, but it does have two extra buttons on the back. This is good because there's little to no noticeable input delay. Overall, it's a pretty sturdy controller, and it has paddles to complement my playstyle. It's not completely ideal because it's not four paddles, but two paddles is still plenty enough to get the job done. Let's go. Let's go. First pub game on the cheap controller. I catch the crown one with 70 limbs. Now this is a $315 Hex Gaming Ultimate. It has swappable pro thumbsticks, a grip, digital tap triggers, and four extra back buttons. This controller is also good because there's no input delay, it's sturdy, and it has a ton of features to complement my playstyle. I just like locked on his head. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude, my aim on this controller is pretty good. Come on. Let's go. Bro. And just for fun, I'm gonna try a couple more. This is my Xbox Elite Series 2 with the scuff replacement paddle. I think the total cost of this controller setup is right around $200. And this thing also has some really cool features, just like most expensive controllers do. And I would say this controller is good for all the same reasons that the last two controllers were good.
That was weird. I didn't even know he was still up there. Not gonna lie, this isn't even my favorite Xbox controller. However, this next controller is one that's literally a quarter of the price. This controller is right around $47. Oh, I can barely see him. Let's go. There's just something about the cheap controllers where I feel like I always do pretty well on them. Let's go. Let's go. Dude, I don't know, is the lever better than the prime? Like, I don't think so, but it also feels like it could possibly be. Dude, some of these guys are insane in pubs. And for the final controller that I'm gonna be using this video, it's sort of in the middle. It's not necessarily cheap and it's not expensive, but it's this PS4 controller that I personally customized. I got all the accessories, like the control figure on the right stick. I got digital tap triggers and buttons. I have these four pals on the back along with this grip. And then of course I also have this really cool custom colorway. I think the total cost ended up being somewhere around $160, which for a custom PS5 controller is actually really good. Who needs an AR when you can just quick scope people? Whoa. My finger keeps accidentally clicking this right paddle, like just pulls out my pickaxe. I'm actually so bad right now, but it's somehow working out. <laughs> That's actually crazy. I literally didn't even see him. I didn't know I had to get to zone either. And you guys can't even call it a zen because zens don't work anymore. At least from what I've been told. I knew someone was up there. Let's go. Let's go. Finally, I get another win, and this time, not even on one of the super expensive controllers. So in all reality, you guys just watched it. The price of the controller does not matter. The only thing that matters are those select few things, and it matters what you can do with the controller. Make sure to like, subscribe. You can use code CARD2K in the Fortnite item shop if you want. And I hope to catch you guys in my next video.